I am here with Carmela. She's one of my clients. She's down about 20 pounds right now. And I wanted to bring her on and just talk about a little of her own journey, kind of why she started working with me, some of the stuff we've done, and then some of the changes that she's seen in her own life. So thank you so much for doing this. Um, I guess you just kind of want to talk a little bit about what caused you to reach out in the first place. What were you looking for? Um, a couple of things. I didn't feel super confident. Okay. Um, I had been stuck at the same weight for a really long time and tried so many different things to, I even tried like macros on my own okay. and <laughs> failed so miserably every time. Um, and it wasn't until my brother works with you and yep, I Jake. saw him, yeah, crazy like transformation. his transformation in such a short amount of time. Yeah. And I talked to him and he's like, just, just reach out to him, see how it goes. And I was kind of at my wits end. So I did. Yeah. What yeah. were some of the other things you had tried besides the macros? Oh, everything. Okay. Um, I really oh, keto. With, oh, keto, intermittent fasting. I think right. that was like it's the a popular most one. No. recent one that I had been yeah. doing right mm -hmm. before I started working yeah. with And you. we actually talked to, I think we went in and did a little bit of myth busting, right? Yep. Because you actually yep. kind of liked, you liked the intermittent fasting. Oh yeah. A lot of people do. And I follow something that probably falls pretty similar to that. But at the same time, if I wake up and want to have breakfast one day, I'm just going to simply have breakfast, right? Yep. Yep. Um, okay, keto, intermittent fasting, macro. So you really did. You tried pretty much pretty much everything. Everything. Starvation, okay. cigarettes, yeah. Yeah. alcohol only. What would you say has been the biggest difference behind what we've done and, and those other things you tried on your own? Do you think it was there were pieces of education that were missing from from some of those diets? Do you think um, it's the accountability? I think it's education, accountability for sure. Although okay. now I feel like I reach out to you less yeah, than you I ever because have. Because you have the knowledge, right? That's the yeah. education though. That yep. kind of, they kind of go hand in hand, right? It's like a lot of people think like, well, I can't have you around for the rest of my life. And well, that's true. But if we spend the time to educate you while you're seeing that physical transformation, then you're building up the knowledge that you need up here to be able to maintain the physical transformation, right? Yep. Those two things should be happening simultaneously. A lot of people go in and focus so much on the physical changes, they forget how to put tools in place so that they know how up here to maintain the changes afterwards. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what your background has been with kind of your body and dieting. You know, have you always been in shape? What type of shape are you used to being in? Things like that. Um, I have not always been in shape. I've always looked like I'm in shape okay. to everybody else. Yeah, and right. which is kind of annoying because yeah. when you tell somebody like, oh, I want to lose weight, right. their first thing we is We learn like, how to dress for our bodies. Oh, People for don't sure. real, as we creep up, we know how to modify things, yep. right? Yep, and even in photos, you know how to pose mm -hmm. and you know how to look good in a sure. photo, but when you take your clothes off and you feel like crap, um, it's not the best feeling. But no, I always looked like I was in pretty good shape and I was always told like, oh, you have a really athletic body, right. which I honestly kind of hated because I always wanted to be smaller and I was told like, oh, well, you're just like bigger bones. You're just, or, right, the, the shoulders are a little, yeah, right, yeah. a little bit broader. Which is yeah. really annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as far as like dieting and my relationship with food, I really struggled like from a really young age. Okay. I, I grew up with a mom who had an eating disorder and so that was kind of just, you just learn that just behavior. Down. It's just handed down to you. Yeah, yeah and you see that as a really young kid. And so I started, I actually started like those habits really, really young. Um, as far as like not eating, throwing up after I would eat, right. that was kind of, um, and was, I would do that and then I would stop. Right, you start to associate that with, well, this is how I stay skinny, yeah, right? Because that's, sure. that's what you were taught, right? There's, that's obviously no fault of your own. Um, and then kind of as into adulthood, how did that progress? Um, it really it got worse and I would go through like an ebb and flow to where I would gain a little bit of weight and then I would almost like punish myself. Like, right. And I think that, no I think that cycle, all. right? It's yeah. almost, it's almost like a, you know, a binge purge cycle, but on more of a long term, right? As For soon sure. as you start to indulge and enjoy yourself, then you're just met with a, an, ons an onslaught of guilt that you feel yep. afterwards and you feel terrible yep. and then you withhold food from yourself again. Right. And then you get back down to a position where you're kind of happy with your body, not really, but you, you think you are, right. but then you're, you're not able to live the life that you want, right? Yeah. People just go back and forth, back and forth between these two, between these two cycles. And, and you now have kind of been able to, I mean, completely able to overcome that. We were just talking before we started about how you can go out to eat now and do all these regular things and yeah. go out and socialize and, you know, you can still drink and have fun and go out with your girlfriends, 
but understand you you know what you're doing now right? right nutritionally i think having that education like what we talked about has set you up the tools so that now it makes it a lot easier to sustain it in a healthy way yeah. still living the life that you want you don't have to pick between one or the other right no which i love yeah and i get to eat <laughs> really good food and that is really fun to not feel like I have to feel bad feel every bad time I do feel eat. Guilty. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. you know what? Actually, I do want to touch on that because that is something I feel like a lot of the kind of perceptions you've had of food when mm -hmm. we came in were a little bit misguided and we, we oh, kinda yeah. we had to go in and correct some of those. So I wanna ask you, what was kind of the most surprising thing to you that we covered, you know, that we have covered in our time working together in regards to nutrition and food? Um, I think the biggest thing is that carbs aren't bad. Like I actually get to eat more really carbs than I do everything else, yeah. <laughs> um, which is really, it's, it's really, it makes it really easy to maintain that. Like right. it's not, um, like through the day, I mean, and even now I've gotten more comfortable with like my macros and it's not perfect. You know, some weeks are yeah. higher in protein, sure. yeah. some are lower, but yeah. it, it's nice to be able to enjoy life, like, and go out. I went to Vegas a couple weekends ago, and I came back, like, a pound. A pound down. Oh, yeah, down. a pound down. I and, know, I remember. And that yeah. was really, it's, like, nice. And even the whole time I was there, I didn't weigh myself. Right. I did, like, bring some of my own food to, like, supplement through the day just yeah. to avoid eating, But it's like, things you like, right? It's, it's like, your, it's like sure. your favorite on-the-go type yeah. things, yeah. right? And, yeah, you have to supplement some. You probably can't eat three meals out every day in Vegas, yeah. right? But you can at least go out at, at night, drink, and probably have, you know, a, a handful of, of really good meals, things that you probably would have thought were off limits before, right? Definitely ate a huge piece yeah. of pizza with yeah. ranch, and it was so good, right. and I didn't feel bad. Yeah, and understanding yeah. that just because it's real pizza with real ranch, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Are you gonna probably have to have a little bit less of it than if you went home made a pizza? Yeah, but at the end of the day, as long as you're being conscious of kind of your total calorie intake, mm -hmm. which you can do now, yep. right? And, and you're staying on track with your goals, you're gonna be able to have those things you enjoy and still make the progress. And like you said, come back from a weekend in Vegas and the skills down a pound. I don't yeah. think that happens for anybody. So that's Not fantastic. Usually. So I wanted to ask you, what were some of your biggest concerns kind of starting the weight loss process, working with a coach? Um, I think the biggest one was that I wouldn't be able to accomplish it. Um, it was probably my biggest fear of just being able to um, and I think even when we first talked, I'd asked you, like, I think my hormones are off. Like, yeah, I think that yeah. there's all these things and you were like, well, just give it a little time. We'll see how it goes. Yep. Um, and I think for me, it was really like the longevity of it. Like, am I going to actually be able to do this yeah, and, yeah. and stick with it and still be able to have a life? Yeah. Get, you know? get to the finish line, right? right. Am I going to be able to see this all yeah. the way through without having to take all the fun stuff out of For out sure. Of my life, basically. And then at the end of it, is it just gonna go back to where it was? Cause right. that's what I was used to is like, you do something for this like amount of time, stick with it like keto. Right. You know, you do that for a month, you drop 10 pounds, but as soon as you go back to On, eating to normal. To eating carbohydrate, it comes right oh, back. Oh yeah, right. you're 10 pounds and, higher. And I think I told you at the beginning, I said, you're not gonna lose weight probably as quickly right off the bat as you have, yeah. but we will be able to keep losing weight all, yep. the, all the way through to the end. And I mean, just in the last the last week, we've actually seen, you know, two good drops again coming mm -hmm. out of the holidays yep. um, and kind of right on that cusp of, of, of finishing it off. That's fantastic, yeah, yep. perfect. So I wanna talk about the scale a little bit. I feel like that's something that you struggle with when we started, yeah. I struggle with. Yeah. Most of the people probably watching this video struggle with. Um, talk to me a little about how your relationship with the scale has improved and how you've been able to achieve that. Um, definitely probably still one of the things I struggle with just, yeah. and it, it really is like when you jump on the scale and one day you're 124 and the next day you're 127, right. you automatically are like, oh my gosh, what happened? Right. I'm, why I'm sliding back. How long yeah. is it going to take me to get back to where I was? Yep. Yep. And I know like in the beginning I would text you like probably at least once yeah. a week, yeah. like Matt, <laughs> what is happening? I don't know yeah. what the heck. And with you explaining to me every time, and I think you explained the same thing to me, like there were, probably there were a few that we, we touched on a couple times, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you just telling me like, you know, did what did you eat? Did you work out? Are you feeling okay? Like yeah. all of those things. Now I can jump on the scale and I can, sometimes there are days where it, like it does jump up. It jumps up, yeah. And sometimes it's 
whatever, whether I ate something or whether like last week I wasn't feeling well. Yeah, you're just a little sick, you're a little yep, inflamed, right? Yep. The scale's gonna jump right up as soon as you're sick. That's one for a lot of people this year who have been sick, right? Yeah. It's important to understand that. It is, and now it doesn't actually derail me and it doesn't, and I will actually go back through like, did I overeat yesterday? Like yeah. how much did I overeat if I did? Cause there are days like, you know, I have kids. So there's well, times where you yeah, you're like, gonna, make you're gonna, them food. Yeah, and you're, you're gonna eat a little bit more. Like oh. take a couple bites and yeah. you're like, I always try to log like, oh, 20 extra <laughs> calories, like yeah. just in case. But um, it's nice to be able to look at it and not freak out and be like, okay, Carmela, you did not eat like 3,500 calories Always yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Right? So you're yeah. okay. You did not gain a pound of body fat. You're solid. Give it another day or two. And then within two days, usually all like, of a sudden, right? You just see it drop. Drops. Yeah. And it sometimes drops lower than what it was It'll, before. Yeah, it go, because, you, because is, you were staying on the program the whole time. So you're yeah. actually losing weight behind the scenes. It just wasn't showing up. So when it shows up, not only does the, the retention go away, but the weight you were losing that whole time. And that's why it's one of the most important things for people to be able to have those things explained to them in the moment, because we've, we've done research studies. Most people, when they quit a weight loss journey, it's, it's during a period that they're going up, yeah. right? Very, very few people do we see quit when they're progressively losing. Right. The problem is so many of those times they're going up, it's not because they overconsumed. Maybe it's a perfect storm of two or three things. Maybe it's time of the month combined with a really heavy leg day two days before, mm -hmm. and you've got a bunch of inflammation in your body right now. But if you don't understand those things and, and, and nobody's ever explained those things, you know, whether it's muscle soreness, illness, you know, hormonal changes, in, increased gut volume, increased fiber intake, increased sodium, there's all these things that affect water intake. And I think when people have never had those different things explained to them, you know, maybe they'll say, oh, well, I didn't have high sodium yesterday, so I know it's not water, but there's a myriad of other things it could be, right? Yep. And you're right, we did. We would go through and I'd break each one of those down with you. And like you said just a moment ago, now you don't have to reach out in those moments, yeah. right? Maybe the scale jumped, but you stop for a moment, you go, okay, what did I do? Yes, oh yeah, I had a really tough leg day. And sure enough, it lines up. And then a few days later, everything always always Goes shows back. up in the end. Yep. Yeah. No, that's perfect. And you, do you feel comfortable now getting on the scale? I would say more comfortable than what you felt oh, yeah. previously. For sure, I don't, um, I think in a lot of ways it used to almost trigger me to either like Stop eating. Stop eating. If it was up, right? Yeah. Yep. And I and Restrict that would yourself. happen a lot. But then also on the other side to where you would see it go up and be like, well, fuck it. Yeah. I'm fuck just going to yeah. eat. I can get away with a little more, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I, that's something I struggle with a lot. And that's something that a lot of, a lot of people do is not only the, the days where the scale is going the wrong way, but the yep. days where the scale really goes the right way, yep. right? Maybe you had a, you know, a couple of drinks last night, so you wake up a little dehydrated. So then you start to justify, oh, I went out last night and I'm down today. I can actually get away with a little bit more, right? Yeah. But again, having someone who's gonna come in and say, well, you know, you had three or four drinks, you're probably a little dehydrated. You probably really didn't drop that much overnight. I think so often, I mean, I have a coach, I, I think I've, I've talked about on Instagram, Having a, a voice of reason that is not emotionally invested in your body helps yep. so much. The value of that alone, of someone else who's gonna take a step back and approach it logically is, I mean, that alone is, for me, is the, is the value of, of having a coach. And that combined with the education is what really, you know, I think most people are looking for. Oh, for sure, and that's what I was just gonna say is not to, uh toot your horn for you, but how educated you are and your ability to explain things in a way that you can understand them. Cause it's not just like, oh, well, you didn't eat this much. You actually break it down. And yeah. that is really helpful to somebody who is me, who overthinks everything yeah. and has a lot of anxiety and is like a psycho. Yeah. Um, having somebody break it all down and explain to me like, this, this, and this, and this helps so, so, so much. And, and I think that is one of the most important things in a coach yeah. um, is if the only thing your coach is telling you is because I said so, or they're simply giving you a, a response, you know, if, if, if you text your coach, hey, the scale's up two pounds this week. Well, you know you didn't eat that much. If that's their only response, you really should be getting more than that. Because otherwise what's gonna end up happening is when that coach is no longer working with you and you've, you've completed your transformation and that same thing happens, you're not gonna have the knowledge and you're gonna go back into that little panic mode. That is something you can fully expect from your coach. Any question should be met with not only an answer, but a detailed explanation of that answer. And if they're really giving you anything less, then you shouldn't be settling for what, what you're getting, right? I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't pay for that and I've, I've fired coaches because of that, that exact thing. So I know that you recently went through a divorce 
um, you know, what, what kind of caused you to continue to prioritize yourself during such a challenging period? And what would you say to somebody else who might be in the same position right now? Well, um, it's been kind of a rough couple years. Um, our family went through some really hard things and then that ended up leading to a divorce. Um, and through that process, you know, you do kind of run through it. And in the past, what was always easiest is to like kind of numb out right. and yeah. um, kind of go the opposite way of taking care of yourself. Like you kind of throw in the towel, go party or yeah. go into like super depressed mode. And that kind of was my MO just kind of through life. It, and, and I really do struggle with depression. So that is something I really was trying to avoid. And I, I have kids and so being able to show up for them um, especially when everything is kind of just really tumultuous and hard. Um, I got to a point where it was really like a choice oh. of, you know, do I want to feel like shit or do I want to go through this process and yes, have really hard days, but give myself something to fall back on that is healthy. That's not hurting me. And also like launching me forward. So that way when right. this is all over, I can better, come out a better place. Yeah, yeah. And at least come out on top in some way. And yeah. you know, feeling if you have struggled with like insecurity, body dysmorphia, all of those things, which I always have, um, being able to come out of a marriage and look at yourself and not only like really feel confident in the way you look, mm -hmm. but feel super proud about being able to accomplish so much through that whole process. Absolutely. Um, it's, it, it honestly is the best decision I've ever, probably ever made. And I, I think I told you on Christmas, like it really like working with you is probably the best gift I could have given myself just because how I feel right now. I've had so many people tell me like, you look happier than you've ever looked. Yeah. Um, well, I've, I mean, I've seen it since we started working together. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, and it's, it's huge. And, and then to like feel confident in your own skin, which is something I've never, ever actually felt before. I've yeah, never, I can, I can relate. <laughs> I've never felt like really comfortable in my own body. And so to feel that and even like workout classes, like yoga classes, I couldn't go to a yoga class alone. Right. Actually you ever. With a friend or something, yeah, right? no. And yeah. now I go like three, four times a week That's by awesome. myself yeah. and I feel super good and don't have that anxiety that really did go away with working with you, the accountability, um, the education, and also just seeing the transformation of myself. Right? It's all, yeah. it's a, kind of all that piece together, right? Yeah. Not only do you, do you look better, right? Which is, it's okay to acknowledge. I mean, it's, yeah. it's okay to acknowledge that sure. you're going to be more confident, but you're doing it in a healthy way. Right? Yeah. Kind of, you know, you went out of your way to make sure, like you said, you had kids and you said, I, I knew I need, I couldn't do it the same way this yeah. time. I couldn't collapse into myself. I needed to take care of myself. And, and you did something that was incredibly hard that nobody does virtually, right? Most people do collapse in on themselves. Yeah. And instead you went the other direction and, and you leaned into making sure that you could not only, you know, be the healthiest, strongest version of yourself for, for your kids, but also, also for yourself. Yeah. And now you are starting, you're coming out of things, right? And yeah. now you're, you're, you, you've got this thing that you put in all this work for and your confidence is higher than ever. You're, you're comfortable doing things that you probably would not have been comfortable in the, at this same time doing if you hadn't made, made those changes. And, yep. and, and like you said, not only are you physically in, in better shape, but you're, you're mentally stronger. For and sure. because you're fueling your body and you're not doing it through a means of just simply, you know, whatever it would, you know, whatever people go to, whether it's drugs or alcohol, and then just underfeeding themselves, which mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of people go that route yeah. or going into food and, and overfeeding themselves. Right. Either one of those positions, you know, life's going to happen either way and, and, and things are going to progress forward. You're going to come out of it either in, in a worse position than what you were even in going into it or where you're at right now, which is like you said, going out and doing life experiences that you love doing that you couldn't even do on your own yeah. because your confidence is so high. Um, and honestly, probably just looking forward to the next chapter in your life even more because oh, yeah. you're coming. I mean, imagine if you had gone that other way, how you would be feeling right now going off into this kind of unknown, but now you're like, you know, look at me. Like I'm, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. like nothing's going to get in your way. That's fantastic. That's yeah. awesome to hear. I really, and I mean, if I were to say anything to anybody else, it would be to prioritize yourself. Um, and it's 100% worth it to do it the right way. 
instead of the other way that we've all tried um, because it feels really good. <laughs> it really does. And I'm happier than probably I've ever been. So are there any foods that we have placed completely off limits throughout this process? Zero, Okay. zero foods. I have eaten pretty much everything I've wanted to. I just have learned how to eat it in a better way. So I That's still eat cereal. Perfect. I still eat ice cream. I still drink. Yeah. I still eat pizza sometimes. And then I also found things that I didn't know I enjoyed that I really do. Yeah, that are things, cool. yeah, things that fall more in line with probably traditional things that people would normally think of as healthy foods in yeah. addition to all the fun things, yep. right? Yeah, that's perfect. So what is the number one thing, if you could only tell somebody one thing who wanted to do the same physical transformation as you, what do you think has helped you the most simply in regards to the physical side of things? Like for, for a lot of people, it's like, oh my God, I had no idea how much fat was at restaurants. That like, that's just like mind blowing to me. Trust me guys, there's way more fat in here. Something like that. So yeah, yeah. what, what was that thing for you? You know, what do you feel like for you was like, it cleaned up the most? It's probably that. It, it, it is yeah. for a lot of people, yeah. right? But I'm always curious to hear people's answer on that. Um, so you think it probably would be is understanding how much fat is really in restaurant food? Well, I think. Um, for me, it's not just fat, but just my, what I thought were healthy choices. There you go. Yeah. Um, we're not at all actually like almost even to like reading labels. I've learned how to read labels. Right. Like there's cereals that I thought were actually really healthy. Yeah. Lucky Charms is healthier. Yeah. Like, well, and I, I don't like whether it's no, healthier that's, no, or not. No, that's honestly, there's going to be people who jump on you yeah. for, for using the word healthier, but you're not wrong. It has less sugar. It has yeah. more fiber than these other cereals that are marketed as, yep. as being, and less calories, yep. right? And, and at the end of the day, even though we like to get hung up on a lot of these, these little, you know, micro nutrients, vitamin, you know, vitamin this, vitamin that, at the end of the day, in regards to overall health, as mm -hmm. well as body composition, total calorie intake and macronutrient composition are still gonna trump everything else. Right. Is, are micronutrients important? Yes. Is fiber important? Yes. Is it, you know, should you eat, try to eat minimally processed things as often as you can in a realistic way? Yes. But at the end of the day, we know that an increase in, in body fat, we know that an increase in things like fat intake and saturated fat intake is going to lead to negative health correlations down, down the road, right? right? And I feel like if people can kind of wrap their head around that, everything else starts to fall into place. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Everything. Um, cereal, ice cream, going out to eat, like, what I would say, like a salad. I always would pick salads, right? And then understanding that Difference. most of the salads I was picking were like 2,000 yeah. calories. More calories in the sandwich yeah, you wanted, it's right? It's insane. Yeah. And so being able to know that and understand mm -hmm. that and sometimes be able to eat the sandwich that I really want to eat And versus, actually be in a better position, right? Yep. You would have gotten the thing you didn't want as much. Yep. You would have been less satisfied. Probably ended up having something later that night or, or, sure. or later that weekend. Yep. But you actually would have taken in more calories. Yep. That's actually a really good example. Example. And that's a really good point that I think a lot of people are falling victim to mm -hmm. where they're going out of their way to get something they don't even enjoy as much. I was at uh, the pizza place the other day and it showed me that you could switch out for cauliflower crust yeah. and it was going to add 200 calories to your pizza yeah. and it was going to increase the fat by 500%. So it was going to be 200 plus calories, five times the amount of fat if you opted for cauliflower crust. But it gives the perception a lot of people I think would, would be under is that cauliflower crust should be, should be healthier. So right. if we're increasing the fat fivefold and we're, we're adding 200 calories to what you're about to eat, I can promise you, you probably don't like cauliflower crust as much as regular crust. It's so, nice right, it's terrible. So not only, you're not getting the mental satisfaction, you're taking in more fat, you're taking in more calories, but the perception still, if you ask the average person, should I get this with cauliflower crust or regular, they would tell you to get it with cauliflower crust. 100%. Right? And there are so many things like that where people are, un are under these misconceptions that have just been perpetuated in the industry, right? There are so many things like people who add avocado to everything. It's like, it's like yes. I, I understand your perception of it as a healthy fat, but for the average person, the, adding more avocado to something is not going to improve their, their, their fatty acid rate. It's just, it's simply not. We already get a lot of omega sixes and nines in, in our diet and it's just simply that you're much better off consuming omega threes or something, but there's this perception of avocados right. and you will get people, I'll have clients who tell me they put them on top of every salad and they're adding two or 300 calories.
calories to a salad and they're not really getting anything out of it. So that actually, yeah. that is a really good point. I kind of hijacked that for me there. That's all but right. But that, that is a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. That, I actually that, don't put avocado on hardly anything anymore. It's not, so I- I, and I feel like it takes so much of- I know we're gonna get hate for it, but again, for the calories, the fact that it's almost as calorically dense as butter. Yeah. I, I, to me, to avocados, if avocado is that good to you, that's, fi that's right. fine. But you need to understand how many calories you're taking in behind it, right? We can view it as something you enjoy and you can have it. And I don't want people to think they can't eat avocado, but it, it, willful ignorance is not going to get you anywhere, right? You're not gonna see the physical results you mm -hmm. want and you're gonna be frustrated because you're gonna be thinking you're doing the right thing. Then right. it's gonna start making you looking in, inside on yourself and wondering if you're making the wrong decision. So, yep. this, I mean, this, right, this kind of illustrates one of the most important reasons why you have to understand the nutrition behind the food and not simply our perception of, of the nutrition that's right. in food, especially just, in, in today's society, because yeah. things are so convoluted and things are so, so misguided. There's somebody telling you something different. I mean, every single day, it's crazy. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say, is what you're told, you know, and even like right. being around other people that- By perceived experts, yeah. people who should be experts yeah. in their field, people who, who they, you know, they're doling out nutritional advice or doling out training advice just because you did something that worked for you doesn't doesn't mean you you have anecdotal evidence is not is not really evidence at all. Right, or yeah. that you share the same goals as somebody else. Right, or not, that your body is, is right. the same, yeah. When we started working together, one of the first things that we did was go in and do kind of some myth busting, right? Mm -hmm. We went in and broke down some of the common myths in, in fitness and, and nutrition. What were kind of some of the most surprising ones to you and what were the ones that stuck with you the most? Um, I think one of the biggest ones was pertaining to intermittent fasting. Um, and the way you explained it to me was it really doesn't matter what time of day you're right. eating your calories. Um, and in my head, it was like, it kind of fell into like the starving myself thing, right. you know? Cause it made me feel like, well, I'm not gonna eat this whole time, right? So yeah. from like right. 8 a.m. until hour, like yeah. eight o'clock at night, I'm yeah. gonna go this whole day and not eat anything, but then go home and and like then, almost and then, feel like it, I could eat whatever it I want. It, it does. It, intermittent fasting, not only does it encourage restrictive eating windows, which, which can be a challenge, right? right? If your feeding window is from noon to 8 p.m. and your friends want to go out on Friday night and you don't have reservations till 9.30, what are you supposed to do? Tell right. your friend, tell your friends you can't eat dinner. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's insane, right? Yep. Or you wake up and your partner wants to go out to get breakfast. Yep. And sorry, babe, I gotta wait until noon. So not only is it is it you know incredibly restrictive in that regard basically highlighting how unnecessary it is. And right. that you eating that same number of calories spaced out whenever you want on that day is gonna lead to the exact same amount of weight loss. Right. And I think I went I think I went a little further and I explained to you why people think it works, right? Oh, yeah. And it's it's the fact that you have fewer hours out of the day you can eat. So what's gonna happen? You're probably gonna eat less calories. Yep. It's the fact that most people put their feeding window after dinner. When do most of us overeat? after dinner. So now mm -hmm. if your feeding window ends at dinner, you can't snack after dinner. So of course you're eating less calories. So it's all these things that are leading to a correlative effect of you losing weight, but then you falsely attribute it to the intermittent fasting and think right. that you have to keep doing that the rest of your life. Yep. And the more of these things you have, whether it's intermittent fasting or people going the other way, thinking they need to eat six times a day or doing fasted cardio mm -hmm. or thinking they need to hammer a protein shake right after they drop the last dumbbell and all these things, when you start to build up too many of those things, it just isn't sustainable for anybody to do, especially not somebody going through something like what you've been going through, right. somebody with kids, somebody who's, who's running a business. You have too many rules. They're all gonna start to fall by the wayside and then you're gonna end up on January 1st trying to get back on track again. It's true, yeah. It's way more fun. Isn't it to, nice to be going in Jan? I was gonna ask you that. Yeah. How good does it feel going in January not needing to- Oh my gosh, it's, not I'm need, so stoked. Not needing to get back on track for the first time. No. Nope. And you've got the tools in place that you know the progress you've made is gonna stay. Yeah. It's not even like, oh, I hope I keep on to it through 2023. Like, I have zero doubt that if I called you up a year from now, you would be, I, I mean, I'm sure you're gonna be in a better position than you are now, oh, for sure. but I definitely know you're not gonna slide back at all, right? No, no. So that's, yeah. I feel way too good. Like I have actually thought this through, like whenever I do stop working with you, which I don't know when that's gonna right. happen, yeah. probably not for a while, but um, to work so hard and get to where you feel so good, yeah. There's no way. No, there's no like, way. You're there's giving, just no, there's no way. way you're giving like, it up. I'm just yeah. what I'm excited for is like summertime. Yeah. I don't have to stress about getting about, in a bathing about suit. Going, you know, getting a bathing like, suit, going, to... going to Mexico. No. How to stay on track when you're traveling, yeah. things like that. No, that yeah. I mean that that is 
the whole point of why I'm so big on flexible dieting. Yeah. I know people think I just hate keto and I hate all these things. It's yeah. really not that. It's the lack of sustainability through the majority of life seasons for all of those other, whether it's IF or whether it's keto or whether it's anything. It's the fact that when all of a sudden you take off to Mexico, you're not gonna follow that. No, nobody, no way. Nobody watching this video is gonna meal prep in Mexico. Yeah. Nobody watching this video is gonna eat six times a day while they're, while they're on the beach. Most people are gonna be drinking alcohol. So yep. don't go and make any modifications that I just mentioned for, for all the time leading up to your Mexico trip because you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna get back from your Mexico trip and feel like you need to get right back on track. Yep. And you're gonna get back on track and then you'll start to slide again because you'll have another one coming up and then the holidays, which we're in right now, yep. are gonna be right around the corner and you're gonna be right back in the same position, but probably a little heavier this time, right? And you're just gonna sure. keep going through that year over year until you take the time to lay down that education, put in the short-term work to be able to reap the long-term benefits for the rest of your life. Yep. So. I feel like it's important for people to understand and know whatever, however you feel most confident yes. isn't wrong. No. It doesn't, when I started working with you even, when I would tell people like, Oh yeah, my goal is to lose 20 pounds. Right. The amount of people that looked at me like I was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you don't have 20 pounds to lose. Right. And then as I started to, to, to get lose, the body you want, yeah, right. but it's my body. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like And I feel like we're in like this time where it's almost glamorized to be a little unhealthy. Like if you have this goal that is to be you're a female and I'm 5'8 and I want to be this certain like weight and it's right. and everybody says well it's not about a number it's not about this and I do understand that to a certain point but at the same time the way I feel most confident kind of yeah. does fall into a certain like and, and again range that, of numbers that in itself right you know what your physique is going to look like at a certain right. number and quantifiable goals are proven time and time again to help people follow through to the end goal. The yep. more specific we can make a goal, the better it is. Now, let's say you get down to that number or you get to a different number and you, you were happy with your body before that, that's yep. perfectly okay. There's yep. nothing wrong though with setting a number so that you have something quantifiable in your head to be working towards. It doesn't mean you need to stick to it and until you hit that number, you're not allowed to be happy. Right. You'd be happy 10 pounds before that number. Yeah. Or, you know what, you might be happy five pounds after that number yep. and that's okay too but you nailed it. You need to be happy with what you're doing and you need to be happy with the direction your body's going. And you cannot listen to what anyone else says along the way because it's not their body. And in all honesty, they have no right to be, to become. No. I can tell you, I receive more criticism and I receive more insults and more mockery looking the way I look right now mm -hmm. than I ever got weighing over 300 pounds. I had one person who maybe was honest with me when I was, and I, I was obviously in a much different position, right? right. Being, being significantly overweight, but I had maybe one person who was honest with me when I was overweight. Now I have people all, all the time telling me that, oh, shouldn't you just, you know, take a day off? Oh, just have some of this. You know, you look, you, you know, you, you obsess too much about this. I get, I get talked down to so much more about all of my, all of my lifestyle habits that I do now, which yeah. are encouraging longevity and health and, and improvement and confidence and all these things. I get ripped more for doing those things than I did for playing World of Warcraft 14 hours a day right. and eating fast food. It's, yep. it's, it is absolutely backwards and you are absolutely right. Regardless of your size, regardless of your weight, it is perfectly acceptable for you to want to change your body and it's not up to anyone else to tell you what that's gonna look like or what's gonna make you happy. And don't let the opinions of others dictate a single decision that you make along your own journey. Right, and through the whole thing, when everybody is telling you like you're annoying for tracking your food and like you will hear all of that, it's still worth it to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I 100% like, I'll be the annoying person. That's who I am and I'm okay And you should it. be, and, you sh and yeah. it, it's you, it's up to you. It's, it, yeah. You're not doing anything. I mean, I, I and I hear that too. Like, yeah. oh, well, why do you have to put that in? Well, I, I, wanna, I wanna put it in. You yeah. know what? I've looked at my fitness pal before. I use it less than eight minutes a day. Mm -hmm. I can promise you every single person watching this video spends more than eight minutes a day on social media. Oh, 100%. Right? It just, it yeah. just, it's where you wanna put your time and where you wanna put your effort. And you know what? On the back end, the, you're either gonna reap the rewards or, or, or you're gonna reap what you sow, which is, is not gonna be too great, right? No. And that person who, who is taking those little digs at you and making those little criticisms and, and, and doing their thing, when they end up seeing your results on the back, on the back end, hopefully it will motivate, you know what, maybe I, maybe I do, you know, maybe I wanna challenge myself a little bit more, or maybe that person doesn't, but right. it's up to that person what, what they wanna do. Yep. And for anyone else out there who's, who, who is, you know, watching this video, 
and has ever commented on, on what someone else's goal is in a way that's anything other than supportive of what they wanna do, uh, understand, I know a lot of people don't do it out there with malicious intent. It, right. it comes from a lot of people that you know don't have malicious intent towards us and they think they're doing something helpful for right. us, right? They think they're that they think they're gonna help improve our relationship with whatever it is. We're taking care of our of ourselves. I, yeah. I I promise. Let me do me and and I'm gonna be in my happiest place. Hundred yeah. percent. No, that's great. That is that is something really good that I think a lot of people end up dealing with on their their whatever their journey is, whether it's to lose weight, build muscle, anything. Yeah. When people start to become high, you know, focused on 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 a goal and they start changing their lifestyle habits, and other people who have known you for a long time, they they don't know you to have those lifestyle habits. They don't really know how to handle it, and no. sometimes they feel like you're taking steps forward that they themselves aren't in a position to be able to take right now and that's okay but what we can do as humans is almost try to hold people back a little bit not and not, not out of malicious intent not out of really wanting to trip them up but out of kind of feeling like we're being left behind yeah. like oh she's gonna well she's really getting into this and really enjoying this like i'm just not at that place right now we will start to kind of tug at people and hold them back as we yeah. feel them start. And and that and it's one of the worst things is something I try to be really conscious of because I know I used to do it when I would watch. I mean, like I said, I was I was playing video games. So when, you know, I'd see a, a, a P90X commercial come on, I turn the TV off. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see, I don't want to see something I knew I should be doing, right? Yeah. I, and, and I would, I would turn it off and I would put some, I would change the channel or whatever because yeah. I knew I was 300 plus pounds and I knew I should be doing something about it, but I didn't want to be faced with that. And you continuing to make those good choices is a reminder to that person that they probably should be doing that same thing too but maybe they're not in, in a position to do that all you should do if that if that is the spot you're in support that person and I honestly probably spend more time with that person because they're yeah. making decisions that are going to help improve their life and I can promise you surrounding yourself with people doing that instead of people doing the other thing is only going to lead to better things in your life